question 1.1.3 is about the pupillary mechanism. Now, the pupillary mechanism comes up a lot in exams, right? So you are likely to get asked a question on the pupillary mechanism, but that's a good thing because actually it's a nice way for you to get some good marks, right? It's um, sometimes, it can maybe be a little bit confusing, but if you take it step by step, then really understanding which muscles are contracting when, how much light is moving through, becomes quite simple. So let's have a look and see what we can work out. Okay, so we're looking at pupillary mechanism here, and you can see you've got diagram one and diagram two, and they're obviously different because the space in the middle, which we know is the pupil, has changed. The size of the pupil is different, okay? So guys, before you have a look at anything here, don't even look at that. Look at these diagrams. Try and work out what you know is happening in each of them, and then look at the answers.